and we're here in Berlin in the second biggest city in Europe. We have to remember that today's solutions don't become tomorrow's problems. And e-mobility is a solution which can sustain. Time's running out and it's very important that we do something about it and everyone should do their bit. And if everyone did a little something, it'll be really big. Please take your seats now for the final countdown. When I make popcorn, I put popcorn in the popcorn machine and then nothing happens. And then all of a sudden it starts going pop, pop, pop. We're going to experience that popping in the next 20 years. What better place to stage a race using non-polluting electric power only than the world center of automotive technology, Berlin, Germany. Formula E taking a stand. The Green Racing Series comes to Berlin. Environmentally friendly motorsports, combined with mobility solutions of the present and future, taking up challenges for a sustainable, clean environment. Right at the heart of it, a world champion, Nico Rosberg. Ambassador, networker, visionary. Why? It's the passion for innovative technologies. That's what it is and that's what I had in Formula One. And that's what these sustainable technologies now have. Time's running out. The clock is ticking. It's very, very important that we do something about it. This is now an incredible time in this field, and so as an entrepreneur, I found this field and found my passion. You have these innovative technologies, but at the same time, it makes such a big positive impact. So it's a win-win, and you can also do so much business. Nico Rosberg, businessman and Mr. Green Tech all in one. The topics of environmental awareness and sustainability have become a mission for him. It's like a new life after his illustrious career in the top tier of motorsports. Of course I miss Formula One racing, and especially the success. I'll always miss that, because those are such strong, special experiences, which aren't so easy to come by in my next life. In 2016, at age 31, he became world champion with Mercedes. Let's look back at what an awesome time it was. He got his talent from his father, Formula One legend Kiki Rosberg. Nico was just six when he first drove a go-kart. I want to drive Formula One and become world champion. Ten years later, he started racing in Formula BMW. We'll let you test drive a Formula One car. Just one year after that, he did his first Formula One test for Williams. In 2006, he drove in his first Formula One race. Then, after 206 Grand Prix, came the crowning glory, world champion. Now, the former speed junkie has mastered other challenges. More mindfulness instead of always going full throttle. The green future is close to his heart. For one thing, the mobility of the future will look incredibly cool. There are e-scooters here, there are velocopters, the flying taxis. First, it will make our life easier. Second, it will be cheaper, which is really crucial. And third, it's great for the planet. I've been struggling with asthma for many years and was once on the road in China. That was probably a decade ago, and I just couldn't see the sky because of all the smog. I know what it means to have a lot of trouble breathing. It's no fun. And e-mobility is here to make our world a bit cleaner. Henningsdorf, near Berlin. E-Rocket, once a startup company, has now gone into serial production. An electric motorcycle with pedals. 100% emotion, 0% emission. 
We need to stop pumping gasoline out of the exhaust pipe, whether we like it or not. It's over. It has to end. We produce an electric motorcycle. You can tell by the fact that it weighs 120 kilos. And in contrast to electric bikes, we have something unusual here. A motorcycle normally doesn't have pedals. Here there's no throttle, which we've been used to seeing for a hundred years on motorcycles. We've replaced it with pedals. So that means I pedal and that's my throttle. It all gets converted. Here in this compartment are the lithium-ion batteries, which supply the power to this engine. And it's a ton of fun. Charging the e-rocket is easy. You plug it into a normal household socket. You have a charger with a plug, and there's a charging socket. You plug it in there. The other end goes into a normal household socket, and it has a maximum charging time of five hours. A top speed of almost 90 kilometers an hour with a range of about 120 kilometers. The price, 12,000 euros. When I occupy myself with something like the e-rocket, when I drive it, I also develop an awareness that you can travel without polluting. And society wants this change to happen. The doors are open to it. People's awareness has never been as high as it is today. Berlin is a city that 40,000 people come to every year to live and work. Mobility must be created for them. What do we want to do? Give everyone a car? That can't be it. We need new concepts. And I see the e-rocket as one of these concepts, one of these new vehicles. We need people to get where they want to go cleanly, quickly and efficiently and have fun doing it. We're getting ready to go green for the 2019 BMW i Berlin E3. We really believe in e-mobility. We are one of the world's oldest manufacturer of electric cars. We've been making electric cars for nearly 18 years now. That's one of the reasons why we are in Formula E, is to let the world know about our brand. Let the world know about our sustainability uh, challenges, know about our innovation, know about our technology. That's why we are racing Formula E. In. Mahindra largely is a global company headquartered in India. India's population is over 1.3 billion and increases by about 20 million a year. In 10 years, India will replace China as the most populous country on earth. We basically believe in giving opportunities to people to rise. That's our catchword, we rise. We come from India, but our view is global. So we operate in more than 100 countries. See, Mahindra is essentially about products, services and possibilities. The long-term goal, a mass-produced electric car that can withstand the strong competition from China. Formula E is an important element, a testing ground for car makers with e-mobility ambitions. In five years of being in Formula E, we have gone and produced the world's fastest electric car, which is the Batista from Pininfarina. Mahindra is expanding with global collaboration with other companies and amazing results. The partnership with Pininfarina, the cult Italian designer, is creating quite a stir. It has 1900 horsepower, 1900, which is twice the performance of a Formula One car. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour in less than two seconds. There's no car currently available in the market who can beat that. Um, zero to 300 in less than 12 seconds.
And I think it's one of the most beautiful pieces of art I've ever seen is a pin and frame car. Formula E, the green racing series up close and personal. Motorsport is coming to the cities and with it, an awareness of sustainability. It's incredibly exciting. You can get closer than at Formula One. <laughs> An exciting motorsport. It's something different. It's a road race. It's like Monaco in Formula One. I mean, just the environmental friendliness and it's, it's, it represents the future. So just to see what direction the cars are going and, uh, yeah, and what performance they put out and that sort of thing. It's interesting. Yeah. What's the outlook for the mobility of the future? It's certainly one of the greatest challenges of our time for government and industry. An event like this brings the mobility of the future to life for the public. It's not only Formula E that's captivating people here in Berlin. We're also feeding the fascination with new products so that the public can get a tangible idea of what the mobility of the future is. Who will take the lead? Who will now take the groundbreaking first step? Together instead of individually, not an easy task in Germany. Well thought out concepts for transforming transport are needed. I have to be able to drive emission free. That's the one sentence that sums it up. And what's more, I not only have to drive emission free, but the vehicle itself must be manufactured in an environmentally neutral manner. And the energy must also be produced and made available in an environmentally neutral way. Of course, this means it makes no sense to only have battery-powered electric vehicles if the electricity is coming from a coal-fired power plant. I think it's first and foremost up to the politicians to do something. I believe we on the technical side are prepared for this. With the Formula E platform, you can also give people an emotional understanding of e-mobility. It's often been discussed in the past. Is e-mobility really just a matter of the head? Is it only sustainable or is it also fun? Please take your seats now for the final countdown. Bitte nehmen Sie Ihre Plätze jetzt ein für den finalen Countdown. For us, Berlin is a very important racetrack. Because our first victory in Formula E was here two years ago, and in fact, we had a double podium, so I'll never forget it. And I call myself HB9 Berliner. We have a fast car, we have two very experienced drivers. I'm really looking forward to seeing them on the podium this weekend in Berlin. I've already taken pole positions, been on the podium. All that's missing now is my first victory. Your five lights are on. And we go green in Berlin. Decent start from Buemi there. He'll have the inside line on the run down towards the first corner. Away we go. The Berlin E3 is underway. Sebastian Buemi has managed to hold the lead. Fair line locks up. Oh, that was close. Lucas de Grassi of Audi in the lead, Sebastian Buemi of Nissan in second, and Mahindra. Despite their optimism and past success in Berlin, Mahindra's drivers come away empty-handed this time. In the end, the Indian team has to settle for 10th and 17th place, a bit of a disappointment. It was Daniel Abt who dominated for Audi in Berlin, but it is a victory for Audi again in Berlin. Yeah! Brazilian Lucas de Grassi wins the Berlin Formula E race, the high point of an amazing weekend. Awesome, a huge success. I'm so happy. We had great winners, 
The expo is jam-packed, tens of thousands of visitors. I couldn't be happier. Overall, for us, the race to road program is very important. We can take what we learn and put it out on the road as soon as possible. And that's something which is important in electric mobility. E-mobility e shouldn't mean doing without something. It has to enrich us. It has to be fun. Mobility is becoming more versatile. As long as it remains as clean as our product, electric and emission-free, period. If everyone did a little something, it'd be really big.